Hello there. Uh, my name is Ari. I'm with Haven Horsemanship. And hopefully, I'm going to be showing you how you can estimate which edicts pommel size you need without access to the pommels. Um, because there are only so many representatives so far, there's certainly not one in every state in the US or every country. So odds are you're not going to have access to a dealer and to the pommels to test yourself. So I've hopefully come up with something using some flexible wiring. I also tried a metal coat hanger because I know um, treed uh, saddle makers tend to use the metal coat hangers. I couldn't really get that to work. So I tried uh, just some flexible coated wire and that has seemed to work. So this is about 20 inches and uh, I do have a new horse that I haven't fitted yet. So we're gonna try to use this to see which pommel size we need and then test it with the pommels. Wish me luck. This is Cisco, and so this is a horse that's new to the property. And I have not ridden him, I've not put any saddle on him, haven't fitted him at all. So we'll be testing out my theory here um, by using the wire to see if we can estimate pommel size closely enough because I can immediately test it with the pommels. So again, for these videos, I am using about 20 inches of coated wiring. Uh, for whatever reason, 20 inches is what I stumbled upon as being far enough down the back that we got the appropriate measurements. I did try a metal coat hanger as well, but couldn't get quite the mold to the wither that I needed. So that's why I ended up with this. So the first thing I recommend is just folding it in half as flat as possible. Um, for whatever reason, that has just worked best for me. Um, I'm putting it kind of right at the highest point of his wither, which is just behind the back of his shoulder blade. And when he stands still, <laughs> I do have it pretty fitted on this side. So I'm not going to try to show the other side trying to fit it, but know that I am fitting both sides all the way down. So as you can see, you then end up with a nice mold of their shape, which can also be really helpful to give you hints as to their asymmetries up by their wither. So you can see this guy is actually pretty even both sides. Now that you have the mold of your horse's wither, you're going to measure it. First, you'll measure down about three inches and mark that spot like I've done here with the pen and measure across. So here, Cisco is showing right around five and a half inches. Then you'll measure down five inches, mark the spot and measure across. And here Cisco is showing a little over uh, 10 inches, close to 10 and a half inches. Cisco has a slightly predominant wither, so I did go ahead and measure him at two and a half inches and four and a half inches. His measure measurements there were five and a quarter inches and nine and three quarter inches. So I will also be taking that into consideration when sizing. Here are the measurements by pommel size. So for Cisco, he's falling between a small and a medium. Feel free to screenshot this table or go to the Haven Horsemanship website and download the PDF on estimating your pommel size. The table is in that PDF. Okay, so as shown, um, Cisco's measurements are kind of between the average and a small. So I'm going to try putting the average on him first. And that one seems pretty close. You know, this is maybe sitting a little bit close in, and this is maybe sitting a little bit far out, which would say possibly a little bit wide. Um, but it is does have you know that little bit of clearance up here we don't want it sitting all the way down even with nothing under it um, so we'll go ahead and try the small but this one looks like it's close okay so now here's the small and that one actually looks really really good 
That one looks pretty good. You know, a little rocked back because he's a little bit underdeveloped in here. Um, you know, we'll probably shim up here near the front of the saddle. Um, but that looks like it fits pretty darn well. I would say that this little case study was a success. So, Cisco's measurements indeed put him between a small and an average. When fitting them directly to his back, the small fit him almost like a glove. So that's the one I'll try first. If I do decide to try the medium, um, it will be because I have decided to shim up front because he is slightly downhill and has that area behind his wither that is underdeveloped. I did decide to measure the rest of the herd to continue testing my theory about how we could measure for pommel size. So here we're gonna go through the measurements and selected pommels for each of the horses in the herd. We're going to go in order of the case studies. So in that first case study video, we saw Moose first, the uphill horse. His measurements were taken at two and a half inches and four and a half inches because he is quite uphill. Those measurements were five inches and nine inches, making the pommel that was selected when we were fitting pommels, the extra small, the appropriate one. Next was Artie, the horse with a dip in their back. His measurements were taken at three inches and five inches, and they were seven inches and 11 inches, making the pommel selected for him during our fitting the large, the right one. Now there was Rhea, the downhill horse. Her measurements taken at three inches and five inches were six and three quarter inches and 10 and three quarter inches. The pommel that was selected during her fitting was the large. This was definitely the best one based on measurements. The average or medium would have been too small. This has worked well because she is shimmed up front. So that extra room I think is accommodated for by the shims. Next is Sierra, the flat backed horse. Her measurements were seven inches and 11 and three quarter inches. That is right on for the large pommel that was selected for her during the fitting. But I am planning on shimming the front of the saddle with her because she is a bit downhill, which is further exacerbated by her flat back. So I will make sure to try the extra large pommel as well when I shim to see if that works better with the shimming. The last horse we saw in the first case study video was Champ, the one with the left right imbalance. His measurements were six and a quarter inches and 10 and a quarter inches. Again, making the large the most appropriate size, and that is the one that was selected for him during the fitting. It does explain why he was a bit between sizes. I almost selected the medium or average size for him. The large has however worked well because remember, he gets significant shimming on one side due to his imbalance. Now we're moving on to the second case study video, and the first one we saw in that one is Uno. Uno's measurements were six and a half inches and 10 and a quarter inches. Again, that's why the large that was selected for him makes the most sense. He is also shimmed up front, so this has worked well. The average was definitely too small. We did try it. Horses like Friday are the reason that I suggest taking both regular and high measurements. Friday is not a horse that I would consider particularly predominant in wither height, but I did find when measuring that the high measurement was more accurate than the regular measurement. So his regular measurements were seven inches and 11 and a quarter inches, which would have put him in the large pommel. His high measurements, six inches and 10 and three quarter inches, pretty firmly put him in the average and that is what fit him best when I put pommels on him. So always do both regular and high measurements. Thanks to the measurements, I will know to try the large pommel in the future if we feel like we need a change, if it feels like the pommel is starting to hinder his movement at all. Next, we have Major, a flat-backed horse, and he is the only horse that has really confounded me as far as using measurements to estimate pommel size. 
So I've measured him over and over again. I have consistent measurements and I have the pommel size that I originally put him in from placing the pommels on their back. So his measurements at the regular place at three inches and five inches are five and three quarter inches and nine and a quarter inches. His measurements high at two and a half inches and four and a half inches are five and a half inches and eight and a half inches. Yet the pommel that I originally selected for him was the large, seven inches and 11 and three quarter inches. So that just doesn't make sense. Um, if you look at the measurement table again, the sizing table, you'll see that he must just, he's a very odd shape. Uh, his withers are quite wide at the top and do not uh, widen at the same rate as apparently the other horses do or like the pommels do. So he's actually falling between a small and a medium. And this was driving me so crazy that I went back out and tried pommels on again. And here are the pictures of that. So here is Major in the large pommel, the one I initially selected for him. And as you can clearly see, it is too big. It does help <laughs> that we have snow today. So his hair is laying very flat. And so it is easy to see that this one is too big. Here is Major in the medium pommel. And as you can see, it is still a little bit big, but it is much closer than the large, probably a good size for shimming. And here is Major in the small pommel. So this one fits quite nicely. If I was not shimming the front of the saddle, I would select this one. So to recap, if I was not shimming, I would select the small pommel for Major. Because we are shimming the front of the saddle, I will go ahead and try the medium. Because he does have this unique shape, I might even try creating some custom shims for him because where he mainly needs shimming is further down, you know, the bottom part of the pommel rather than the top. He also might be a candidate to try the soft pommel. He's not a horse I ride a whole lot in tack. We're usually just doing something fun bareback. So uh, I have not been riding him in the saddle, but when I do, I will try that medium first and then possibly the soft pommel and then Probably third option would be looking at custom shims if he still just doesn't quite seem comfortable. And then last we have Tiki. Tiki's measurements were seven inches and 11 and a quarter inches, making the pommel that was selected for her during her fitting the large, the appropriate size. She, similar to Sierra, is one that I may try the extra large on her as she is shimmed up front and just see if that seems to make a difference for her. I found trying to figure out a way that people can estimate their pommel size really fascinating. And one of my biggest takeaways was that even if you do have access to the pommels to use and try, I recommend measuring because you might discover that going up a pommel size, especially for a horse for shimming, is worth a try. I highly recommend doing the whole process three times, meaning molding to your horse and measuring to make sure you're getting consistent numbers. If you aren't getting consistent numbers, Keep repeating it until you do start getting consistent numbers. If your horse does need shimming up front, I think it is even more important that you measure. Because if you have a horse like Tiki and Sierra shown in this video who is almost right on in pommel size and they need shims, odds are that pommel that is right on in size is going to end up being too tight once the shims are in place. So consider trying going up a pommel size if you have a horse close to the measurements and that needs shimming up front. Okay, so now it's your turn. Um, I only have so big of a sample size right now, so I look forward to you guys joining that sample size and giving me feedback on if this measurement is working for everyone. I will continue gathering data as I start doing fittings here. I have a couple local fittings lined up where I will make sure to do the wither mold, measure it, and then do the pommel so that I get more data around if this measurement system works. Fingers crossed, hopefully it does and hopefully it's helpful for everyone. Thank you as always for joining me and I will see you soon for the continuous fitting video. Take care.